Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Feels like it's been a while since we've been together, doesn't it? With uh, August at, at Wesley and uh, um, summer, it's just been a busy time of travel and, and coming around. It's great to be together. Now, first and foremost, I want you to know, yes, indeed, the barbecue is on. Rain or shine, we've, uh, we can adapt quickly, and we've prepped far too much food to cancel. <laughs> so come and come, uh, come with your appetite. Uh, bring your Wallon chair, and that's all you need to bring. We're looking forward to being together. We've got the house. We've got the, a couple gazebos, and we'll do fine. One of, the, uh, one of the ways that we want to encourage you in your spiritual walk is a program called Creative Spirit. Uh, Creative Spirit um, introduces art and um, creative sort of things and intertwines it with faith-based um, lessons. It starts on October, thank you, October 12th and runs for four weeks. Um, so if you are interested, we, we need a minimum of, of eight people. Um, it is on Wednesday afternoons or Tuesday afternoons? Wednesday, Wednesday afternoons at 1 o'clock, and the cost is $40. That's for all, week, uh, all, all weeks, and it covers your, um, all, your, all the stuff that you need. So if you're interested, give Lori a call or... Um, or uh, Heather Grundy, and uh, we hope to see you there. It's led by Carolyn Campbell. Um, so I know a couple of you participated in, in, in it about four years ago, so we're bringing it back. People's Memorial, the church that I was at formerly, is uh, I got a call this weekend, they're doing their meat pies again. So if you, and I know a lot of you have taken them and they're delicious. They had to raise the price to $5 a meat pie, they're the individuals. Um, but uh, cost of everything's going up. So if you're interested, see Don Luke following uh, the service, and he'll sign you up. You don't need to pay for them today. You pay for them when they're delivered, and that'll be at the end of the month. Uh, we, uh, we have something new, a newsletter that it's, that's coming to you. Both hard copies are available, but also through uh, email, and Joni's going to share a few things about that. Good morning. Oh, there. See, you've got it. And welcome back. And so Martha probably doesn't realize, but the newsletter, which is called Centrally Speaking, some of you will remember it, is, was before. So we are bringing it back. So every month we will have one. The first copy is downstairs on the bulletin board 
for you to browse. They will be emailed to everyone. Anyone who doesn't have email, come and see me and I'll make sure you get a paper copy. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Joni. It has been a week that has been, if the word that comes to me is fat with news stories. There's been so much going on in our world. And indeed, and I'm, I'm going to get choked up, of course, we, uh, we said goodbye to Queen Elizabeth II on Thursday. The only monarch I think that most of us have known. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, a loss, and we knew it was coming, but we kind of hoped she'd live forever. So today, we, we have sung, I know when I was a little kid, starting school, at least for the first year, we didn't sing O Canada, we sang God Save the Queen. God has saved the Queen. So now, at the conclusion of the service, instead of my benediction, We'll be singing God Save the King as we support and pray for King Charles III. Whew. Okay. <laughs> as we gather to worship God and share in the work of grace and justice, let us pause to remember that in this region we live and work and worship on lands that are by law the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all. We begin as we did before our summer break, lighting the candles of peace for the people of Ukraine and Eastern Europe. And we offer this prayer. Let's pray together. O oh God, you have given us the ministry of being ambassadors, ambassadors of your love and grace and peace in this world. And although we cannot be there in flesh and blood, we are there in spirit with the people of the Ukraine and with the people of Russia who do not want to see this war continue. We're saddened that it's gone six months and the destruction and loss of life that has happened. But we know that where there is breath, there is hope. So we pray for peace in Eastern Europe. We pray that instead of expanding, the conflict will contract and eventually be settled. We pray for changes of hearts and courage and wisdom for all who are involved. Amen. Let's read responsibly our call to worship. God calls to the lost, the least, and all who long for home. God calls when we wander from the path chosen for us and the ways we have been given. God calls and welcomes us back to worship this day. Let us celebrate and rejoice in God's presence forever. Let us worship God together. And let's look to the screen or in your hymnals to number... 395, come in, come in and sit down.
Let's pray together. Creator, eternal God with us, with open arms you welcome all who call on your name, who acknowledge you as God and look to you in faith. No one stands outside the circle of your mercy and love. And so we come to offer you our worship, to declare that you are God, and that we are your people, called and chosen by you from the very beginning. Through the presence of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see you there. Open our minds to receive your truth, and our mouths to speak and sing your praise. For you alone are God, worthy of all praise and worship, now and to the end of time. I'm going to invite the Lampman boys up with me for a minute. Come on up, guys. Victoria uh, also helps out at St. John Stevensville Church, and her Sunday school teacher there broke her leg this week. So... She, she was really sorry that she couldn't be here, but I said, we got you. No problem. Come here, guys. It is so good to see you guys. What's new? How's school going? You gave me the thumbs up. Yeah. Have you guys, have you guys ever lost anything, like a favorite toy or, or uh, no? Oh, you're very responsible then. How about you, Andrew? Not really. Have you ever misplaced something that you forgot where you put it and then you had to look a bit and then you found it? Yeah? Yeah, that makes more sense. Usually, usually it's somewhere in the house. It's just trying to figure out where it is. Now, have you guys ever been lost? Have you been at a, a store or anything and, and all of a sudden you looked around and mom and dad weren't there and you got a little nervous? No? no? Wow! Well, yeah, we guys, we really haven't been in stores a lot the last two years, that's for sure. Well, I remember a story that Michelle told me, and her daughter, when she was little, she's, she's an adult now, but when she was little, she was in the store with, with Michelle, and Michelle was looking at stuff, and all of a sudden she looked around, and Lindsay was missing, and her heart sank, and, and she started to get nervous and call Lindsay and Lindsay, and what Lindsay had done, and she didn't know she shouldn't do this, but she had, you know those big racks that go around in a circle with clothes on them? Yeah. And she had snuck in there and was hiding. She was playing a game, but it almost, it almost gave her mom a heart attack. You, kind of like hide and seek, except Michelle didn't know it was hide and seek. Well, she was found quickly, and it was Michelle who was nervous. Lindsay was fine. What we're going to talk about um, up here today, after you guys go down, is how God is always looking for us. He's always looking for us. Just like if we lost something, we're always looking for it. God's always looking for us. And he never, ever, ever gives up because we're his children. Just like your parents, if you got lost in the mall, um, Larry and um, Betsy would look and look and look until they found you. Now, fortunately, that hasn't happened, but they'd never give up looking for you, and God's the same way. So I'm going to say a little prayer for you guys, and then you're going to go downstairs with Lori, and you're going to do some cool stuff down there. Okay. You want to go down those stairs? Oh, but you're going to go out this door, so you're going to do the whole circle. Okay. <laughs> He is a ginger, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're, oh, you guys are going to the church house, so you're going a different way. Okay, so let's pray. Oh, God, thank you so much for Wayne and Andrew, um, for the great time we had at VBS this summer, and for their great first week of school. We pray that you would bless them today and in the days to come, and also, God, that they would be reminded, be reminded that you love them just like their mom and dad do and you watch over them, and if they're ever lost, God's coming to find you. Bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to see you guys. Smashing shirt, by the way. And yours, too. So have fun. See you later. Oh, guys, actually, you're going to wait with Michelle, for, and you're going to get to listen to the choir, and then you're going to go down with Lori.
We're going to take some time to lift our, our concerns and our blessings to the Lord. I know this isn't the usual spot, but we're, uh, we're experimenting a little with the order of worship. One other thing, we've pared down our prayer list um, we, uh, for a lot of reasons, some of them that God has answered those prayers. If you have someone you would like on the prayer list, please give Lori a call or shoot her an email um, uh, sometime this week. Let's pray together. Oh God, it is good to be together. We thank you for the technology that has allowed us conti to continue on through these last few years, that we really haven't missed a Sunday together, even virtually, but it's so much better to hear voices in this, in this sanctuary and the choir assembled. Oh God, we thank you for all the blessings in our lives, and we have so many. We thank you for warm fellowship, for a country that is safe and at peace. We thank you for our government, although it not be perfect, it's pretty good. And we pray especially for those in municipal government and for the upcoming election next month. We pray that voters would pay attention to the candidates to really know who they're voting for. And that, oh God, we would choose people of courage and creativity and compassion as they lead us at the most local level. Lord, we thank you for churches around the world that lift you up. We think of this morning, especially St. Andrews United and we, in Hamilton. We know there's a lot of St. Andrews United. But the one in Hamilton, oh God, serves a group of people who are marginalized often. We thank you for their minister, for the leadership of that congregation, and for its longevity. And we pray that they would be a blessing to the community that surrounds them. We pray for those who are going through difficult times, and we um, are thankful that first person on our list, Ross, is responding very well to chemo. And we pray that as the doctors go forward with him, that there would be a match with um, bone marrow transplant. We thank you for the positive and successful surgery Carolyn had this summer as a very large disease kidney was removed. But now we pray, oh God, for a new kidney. 
Lord, we also lift up Karen and Roland and Jim and Mike and Steve and Sharon, Carol, Beate, Cynthia and Crystal and Jeannie and Kelly and Donna. You know each need there, oh God. You know the progress in what they've been dealing with and you know the outcome. But you call us to pray, to stand in the gap, to be encouragement to those who are downtrodden, those who are going through difficult times. We also rejoice with new babies to be born and growth in the church and new folks showing up. Thank you, O oh God, for, again, all the blessings in our lives and help us to really celebrate all that there is and all that you are. Thank you for times of, of gathering and all the commonalities we have, especially this prayer that binds us together as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let's look to the screen as we sing together, I have called you by your name. In one of the news reports I watched, uh, I've been watching the last couple days, they, they were talking about different things in, in Queen Elizabeth's life. And one of them was uh, when she took the, uh, when she took the, the throne, her um, coronation in 1953, um, it was eight years after World War II had ended. That's a long time. However, there was still food insecurity in Britain, and they still hadn't suspended the ration, rationing of food. And I thought to myself, wow, um, I know that wasn't true in Canada. It had long been suspended. And we have never had to deal with that, not in my lifetime. So again, we are so blessed with the abundance in which we live that because of the confidence, because of our wealth in a world, in a global um, perspective, we are compelled to give. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for the generosity of the monies that are in this plate, 
but we know that people give their time and their talents as well as their financial resources so that others may know your love, your grace. Thank you for all that is given. May we be good stewards of all that we have and share it with others. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Matthew, verses 1 to 10, and it's from the New International Version, and it's entitled, That Which Defiles. <clears throat> then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? tradition. For God said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. And then Jesus turned aside and said to himself, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. And then Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand. Holy wisdom, holy word. This is one of those Sundays where if something could go wrong, it will. Thank you, Brad, for reading that scripture. As you began it, I realized it's the, it wasn't the right scripture. <laughs> uh, we got the right chapter, we got the right verses, we had the wrong gospel. So, I begin with Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear him, meaning Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found the lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a, candle, can't light a lamp? sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. In, this, in the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And again, holy wisdom, holy word. I'm glad I've got the right sermon in front of me. While it's been a week filled with news and world events that affect us all in some way, it's not lost on me that it marks the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. It's almost gotten overshadowed by the Queen's passing. What followed that awful day was searching and rescuing any possible survivors that lay under the debris and rubble of the buildings. 20 people were dug out and their lives were saved from the ground zero area. Two of those men were Port Authority police. They were Sergeant John McLaughlin and Officer Will Gimeno. 
Their story is told in the docudrama World Trade Center. Good movie. Their, rescue, their rescuers kept looking for anyone who could be saved, and they didn't give up. Will Gimeno was able to move his arm, and he found something to bang on a pipe, and he did it continuously so they would know someone was there. Just about a month ago, I interred the ashes of a man named Lloyd Larsfolk. He was 90 years old and lived in the Brantford area for at least half of those years, but had lived in Fort Erie for a significant amount of time and wanted to be put, laid to rest there. And his, all his children had been born there in Fort Erie as well. At the time, it seemed like a pretty usual service until I spoke with his son. His son told me that his 15-year-old brother, Eric, had disappeared with the neighbor's son, who was 16, in 1981 in Caledon. I don't know if you remember that at all. He told me to Google Eric Larsvog, and it would fill in his father's story. While the police had had a good suspect, they could never find the bodies or any clues as to what happened. The case to this day remains unsolved. However, Lloyd never gave up looking for his son. As recent as two years ago, he would go up, up to Caledon, where they had lived out in the country, and walk those roads looking for any shred of evidence that would help him know what really happened to his son. His brother told me that if Eric was alive, he would have contacted the family because there wasn't conflict in our family. We were a loving group. So he was pretty sure that Eric was dead. But his father never gave up looking. The mercy of Lloyd's death is that he would finally be reunited with his son who had disappeared and his wife who predeceased them. And he would finally have his answers. Our scripture reading for today tells the story of searching for that which is lost and the great joy whatever is, when whatever is lost is found. Now, a little more humorous story. A devout old shepherd lost his favorite Bible while he was out looking for a wayward lamb. Three weeks later, a sheep walked up to him carrying the Bible in his mouth. The shepherd couldn't believe his eyes. He took the precious book out of the sheep's mouth and the sheep said, I found your Bible. The shepherd raised his eyes heavenward and explained, It's a miracle! A talking sheep has found my Bible. Not really, said the sheep. Your name was written inside the cover. <laughs> now I'm glad you laughed because the joke works because of the different perspective of the sheep. The sheep didn't think this was a big deal. The shepherd obviously did. The Bible's back. There's the talking sheep. And if you look at it instead from the perspective of the talking sheep, it's not that big a deal. So we hear today's gospel reading from Luke 15, 110. Let's hear it first from one perspective, maybe a different perspective than you're used to. The scribes and Pharisees were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. So let's, let's put on our best scribal ro robes, you know, our kind of uh, religious elite attitudes, and hear the story from their point of view. The story of, is told of Father Allen on, on holiday in France. He wrote, Father Pierre, who is 89, was preaching. We've been listening to his homilies now for some 20 years. Like most French sermons I've heard, Catholic or Reformed, Father Pierre said something which did not, uh, Father, uh, oh, sorry, Catholic or Reformed, they're rather serious in solemn affairs. But on this occasion, Father Pierre said something which did provoke laughter from the congregation. He told us how when he was a boy, he had been at church with his parents and brothers, the gospel that day was the prodigal son. But when they got home, their father said to his sons, don't think you'll be welcome back like that if you go off and blow the family fortune on women, wine, and song. Sort of a pharisaical approach. And it is really 
when we think when we think in our modern day, cause and effect, justice, the proper answer. If someone has treated us badly, we want them to face justice. And if we've been going to church, working hard all these years, and even some newcomer turns up, surely our views are more important than theirs. Surely we are more important than they are. Well, Jesus wants to change the way we think. He wanted to change in those days the way they thought. Now imagine something really precious that you've lost. And any parent would know a child's security blanket is worth its weight in gold. If a child misplaces their blanket or their favorite stuffed animal, parents will search high and low and even get in the car and go back to the daycare or the neighbors or wherever they lost it because they know if they don't, they're very likely to have a sleepless night. Some Think of something precious to you, your wedding ring, your, your car keys, your passport, your child's blanket. Imagine what it would be like to find that after you lost it. You got that feeling in your head. Now, how we are meant to feel, how are we meant to feel when one of our brothers or sisters out there in the local community finds God? Drop your plans for today and celebrate. Cancel the lunch you were having with your family. Make time for this new Christian because something wonderful has happened. What was lost has been found. Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep or coin or person that was lost. Just so I tell you, there is, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Well, not really, says the sheep. Your name was written on the inside cover. So, ch again, change your perspective a little. How does this story sound if you are the person ostracized by society? The tax collector who took the well-paid job from the Romans only to find that he has sold his soul, wealthy but cut off by everyone for being a collaborator, not just feeling lost, or the sex worker, like she had a choice about, a, about what job she went into. People don't become prostitutes for fun, but other people whose lives have gone smoothly are often too quick to blame them for the choices they have made. Imagine that sense of lostness. And it is into this that Jesus sits down at dinner with his sheep. And he tells stories about things that are lost. Do you feel like a sheep munching away on grass? You thought you were doing the right thing and suddenly you have fallen down a ravine. That terrible sense of lost desperation. But don't worry, somebody's coming. Somebody's going to lift you out of it. Or maybe you feel like the coin, a pointless bit of metal fallen down the back of the sofa, now no use to anyone, just covered in dust and dirt and in our case, pet hair, until that hand comes down to the sofa and finds you. Her wedding coin worth thousands, so precious, the joy on her face as she is so pleased that you are found. Now the question is, have you experienced being found? Because all of us at some stage in life have been lost. You don't have to been a sellout or on the margins of society to feel lost. You were maybe on the wrong track at one point in life. Perhaps you feel you still are. Your life feels useless. Whether you feel like your own mistakes have left you wandering down a ravine, or you feel like life has happened to you and you are abandoned on the back of a sofa, there's one coming to find you. American priest Father Mike Marsh shares, the point for Jesus is searching, sorry, the starting point for Jesus is searching, not blaming, finding, not punishing, rejoicing, not condemning. The first question for Jesus is not one of sin, 
who's in and who's out, or who gets a dinner invitation. For Jesus, everyone is in. Everyone is invited. The first question and primary concern of one's presence. Have we shown up, or are we lost and missing? Notice the parable that Jesus offers. They're not about being wrong. They're not about being lost. A sheep is lost. Sorry, they are about being lost. A sheep is lost. A coin is lost. There's nothing about culpability, blame, or finding fault. That doesn't seem to be Jesus' concern. His concern is for the one that is lost and missing and absent. Jesus doesn't explain how the one became lost. He doesn't even blame or judge. That's not the issue. The issue for Jesus is recovering and reclaiming the lost. Can you imagine if, if Mr. Lars Folk's story had had a different ending and he had found his son alive and healthy? I doubt he'd punish him for taking off without telling anybody. I think he would just love him and thank God that he was found. No doubt, we can all be lost in the darkness of evil. But here's the deal. We can also be really good and really lost at the same time. We can be good, hardworking, and successful in our career and still feel lost without a true sense of direction or meaning. We can be holding it all together and still be lost in the depths of grief or despair. And the story doesn't not end with lostness, but with being found. Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, my my coin, my child that was lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels. Remember a devout old shepherd lost his favorite Bible while he was out looking for a wayward lamb. And three weeks later, A sheep walked up to him, carrying the Bible in his mouth, and the shepherd couldn't believe his eyes. He took the precious Bible out of the sheep's mouth, and the sheep said, I found your Bible. The shepherd raised his eyes heavenward and explained, It's a miracle. A talking sheep has found my Bible. Not really, said the sheep. Your name was written inside the cover. What perspective are we going to see in today's gospel reading? Are you hearing the story as someone who needs to learn to be a better shepherd or as a sheep who needs help? As a farm worker and a churchgoer who needs to be reminded of how precious it is when someone comes to faith? Or as the person in a mess who needs to be reminded how precious you are to God who has not given up on you? Like the rescuers in the Twin Towers, or Lloyd Larsfolk, Jesus never gives up, and neither should we. Let's pray. Oh God, most of us in life have gone far afield, have lost our way, only to be found again, with no questions, with no chastisement, because you love us unconditionally. You love us in a way that we can't imagine here on earth. And we thank you for this love and for, your deter- and for your determination to have all 100 sheep of the flock back together. Amen. Let's look to the screen or in our hymnals and sing together number 602, Blessed Be the Tie.
just a reminder that following the service, everyone is welcome downstairs for a time of, of fellowship, coffee and tea, and there's cake. So we want you to come down and, and uh, celebrate being back together with us. In, in, um, in place of our, our regular benediction, let's lift up King Charles III as we sing, God Save the King.